Hello, welcome to Wardrobe School. This is the class where we're gonna upcycle. It's an easy project where we're gonna upcycle a blouse. Okay, we're gonna transform a button up shirt into a blouse. Okay, just a little bit about myself. I'm Vanya, I was born in Brazil in Sao Paulo, and I moved to New York City around 2007, it was in 2007, and around that time I learned how much clothing waste happens in the country. And so I started to uh, get more into that and I started upcycling clothes. I didn't even know the term upcycling, but I would buy clothes by the pound or at thrift stores and stuff and transform them into something new, right? And so ever since I've had a shop, I have had another shop. I was a designer owner of the brand La Vie Maria, which was in Williamsburg in Brooklyn in New York. And uh, after a while, I ended up closing my store, just doing markets and stuff and selling online. And now, last year, actually, uh, about a year ago, I started this project that's called Wardrobe School because I think people should upcycle more, make more stuff and have, you know, more small businesses. So uh, I invite you to come with me, do the search, and maybe it's your first project. I hope that gets you inspired to make much more. And if you have upcycled before, Maybe that's not like so surprising to you, but it is a nice project if you sell clothes, especially. This is a blouse that sells very well. I've sold a bunch of them. So I would also welcome to try it out and make it. All right, so let's get started. So what kind of supplies do we need for this project, right? We don't need much. It's just, you probably have everything at the house already. It's just some simple stuff and easy, you know, basic sewing stuff, okay? But let's just check, so make sure you have it. Uh, so first off, sharp scissors for fabric, right? I also am um, going to use ruler. If you have any ruler, I have this graph one. You don't need a graph one, but this is helpful. Uh, chalk. I do use this pencil chalk, you know, that you can find like different colors and you can get refills for it. I like it because it's just easy, uh, but you can use any chalk that you have, Taylor's chalk. Also, we're gonna need the seam ripper. <laughs> I always say that's the best friend, it's the frenemy of the uh, sewist, right? Because uh, you don't like to undo things, but this is very helpful. Also, we're gonna need sewing pins. I do like to use, um, it's glass head, very thin, the thinnest pins they have, because I usually work with fine materials and I don't like my pins to make holes on my fabric. So I just keep those there, uh, Great, I really love them. Uh, so I recommend you to have them. If you have different ones also, it's fine, no problem. Okay, then we we're gonna need the measuring tape. That's also very helpful. And we're gonna need some yarn. And so, you know, I would say like crochet yarn, any kind of yarn you have, it's fine. If it's wool, if it's not too thick, you can use it, okay? If you don't have yarn, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you another way to do this step, but if you have yarn, it'll be faster. Then you need thread, right? The same color. And uh, last but not least, the shirt, right? And what kind of shirt do you need? So basically, you just need like a button-up shirt. It doesn't need to be anything specific. If it's a little, like at least one size larger than you, it'll be better because the design of the final shirt, it's like more like a loose silhouette. Um, and uh, let's talk about the material that the shirt is made of, right? Personally, I only work with natural fabrics. I try at least, like very rarely, I work with polyester or anything synthetic. I try to keep like, you know, linen, cotton, silk. And in this case, the ideal is like a silk shirt. I'm using a silk shirt. If you don't have a silk shirt, don't worry. It could also be a cotton shirt or, you know, any shirt you have at the house. You can at least like try and test the cut because this cut, we're not gonna use a pattern, right? We're gonna build it as you, as we go. So uh, I also have, even recommend you to not do it, like say like you have the shirt and you love it, uh, you don't wanna cut it and if it goes wrong, you, you'll be sad. So I recommend you to test on another shirt that you have and then if you like, you can make your favorite shirt, okay? Um, but if you don't care, then go ahead and do it. You can do like an, a men, with a men's shirt, you know, just like a button up shirt, it will work but if it's more flowy, right? So if you have like a light material, some sort of like rayon or, and even if it's synthetic, but it's more like, it's like silky, it will be better, okay? And me, I was debating whether 
do this one or this one. Um, this one I printed, this one I didn't. Oh, by the way, if you want to um, know, so I do my own prints on, on shirts and fabrics and all. And I have a mini course on that. If you want to check it out, it's on my website, www.wardrobeschool.com. And um, you can just go and take the mini course. You know, it's I teach everything, all my tricks and stuff. But anyway, so I was thinking, I printed this one a while ago and I was thinking to use this one. But then this one I just got recently. Uh, I think I'm going to use this one because there's a pocket thing here. And also this shirt kind of like has a little, I have to resolve the armpit thing here. But see how this pocket is like already doesn't have a flap and this one does. So I think if I work with this one, I can, in case your shirt has this as well, I'll show you how to work with that. Basically, we we'll just remove this. Okay. I think this one needs more help and love than <laughs> the printed one. So we're going to work with the fuchsia, right? And look, I have the exact, uh, I, that was a coincidence. I bought this. <laughs> color the other day and look it's the exact same one so I'm excited about that I think it's a sign we should work with this so what is the first step right the first thing you do is you gotta iron it and that's one of the supplies we're gonna need right a nice uh, if, if you don't have a uh, steam iron you're fine you can do it a regular one you can just spray some water or whatever but I like to have a hot steamy iron to uh, iron my clothes because I like everything I sew. It's, I really, uh, I'm crazy about ironing, pressing everything, pressing the seams and all. Even if the shirt gets wrinkled afterwards, you want all this, see how it's all like, uh, how you call it, like, you know, crunched up like that. You don't want to work with anything like that. So I have to smooth this out, all the shirts iron very nicely. And then I have to remove the label, even though I really like this label, it's like a, uh, vintage cool you know embroidered label but it's not legal for you to alter something and then keep the original label right so I'm gonna remove it I'm gonna iron it and then afterwards using the same ripper I'm gonna remove this uh, pocket flap is that you, how you call I guess so so that's that's it and then the shirt is ready to start getting recycled right So here I am removing the tag. I usually uh, try to pinch the thread that's over the label to not cut the shirt below, right? I don't want to damage my shirt. So I just rip from here and then uh, start when it, I see the seam like loose underneath, then I cut it. But that's uh, just being careful and see, that's it. Then remove the little threads. And then the same process we're gonna do for the pocket flap things, right? <laughs> this little top here. We don't need this, right? So, um, but this is really tough to remove because of the uh how tight you know they usually put the stitch the stitch length when they attach things like that very tiny so it's very tight and that's how you have to be very careful so i go really like over the thread here on the pocket and cut it it's the same process with the label but even more careful because you don't want to ruin the shirt right on the chest right and one tip is like you can do that before you wash the shirt because there will be marks on the shirts on the shirt front after you remove this uh, so, but then when you wash it the marks go away so you might want to do that before or just wash it later right but see I try to find like an opening here I keep cutting the thread until I until it like detach uh, at least in one spot from the shirt. I think this one has like a double stitch because they did they attached the thing and then they did a top stitch. So it's 
extra hard, <laughs> but I can do it. Maybe coming from here. Oh, I just don't want to ruin my shirt from, right? Now we opened it up. See, when I find one room here, it's open. So then I start, I see the thread and then I can cut the thread very careful to not cut the fabric. There it is, right? So I'll just keep working on this, remove this one, and then remove the other one. And voila, look, I removed it. Now it's nice and light. It didn't go bad, so I can just iron it and it should be okay. But I'm sure when you wash it, it'll be better, right? So now, what do we do with this shirt? Look, it's ready. It's uh, irons, right? So now what you need is, you need your measurements, right? I usually work from um, this shirt from the waist down. So I cut it to the waist and then start working from the waist. This shirt has a stain here, so this will help because I'm gonna remove it. So pretty much you have to place your hand on your waist and then measure from your shoulder to your waist how far it is how what's that measurement right and it would be exactly like when you put and then you transfer to the shirt right mine for instance is 17 18 like it's 17 i'm gonna do 18 to add like uh seam allowance right so i go here about like an inch away from the shoulder from the neck an inch away from the neck right here then i go from there down so if i mark 18 here's my mark then i mark a little bit with my chalk and the same thing from the other side before you have to you know make sure the the shirt is very smooth on the table or flat and then you mark it there so now I know that that's the cutting line for me and remember you don't need to be too precious about this right you can just it's like it's experimental uh, it's about get it going and making it instead of like being perfect. It's not going to be perfect. Okay. Uh, remember that. Don't forget. <laughs> We're not trying to uh, win the Oscar. Like I said the other day and the girls loved it. So, you know, this is not an Oscar. <laughs> All right. So we're going to cut it right here. And that's when the ruler comes in, right? Place the ruler there. Trace it. because the silk is not so easy to trace like that, but we can do it. And then one thing I like to make, to do now, just to make sure that it's correct, I measure from the armpits, right? Look, that's six inches. And then just to make sure here is the same thing. So it's not like, yeah, this could be a little six inches as well, but it's a little lower, but it's correct. So it's ready. This line is straight, so I can just cut it. All right. So now we have this material. We can put it on the side. And now it's the sleeve time, right? So to work with the sleeve, I'm going to button the shirt up all the way. and then fold it so the two sleeves are together just to make sure the length is equal right so from here from the underarm to the cuff it's flat and smooth because now we're gonna cut it and that's the same thing so before you cut it you can try on the shirt or use another shirt that you have to to know like around you know how long you want this sleeve to be right for me i'm gonna do by eye but you know if i measure it i would measure from my shoulder down would be like about nine inches something like that yeah which was what i already thinking right so i'm just gonna mark here you can, there, you know, you do the way you want, like you can do by eye, you can measure from your shoulder, uh, the tip, the shoulder tip 
down or um, have another shirt. You measure your shirt, another one that's short sleeve and see how long is the short sleeve and then you cut it. All right, mark it there and cut it. All right, so now we have a crop top basically, right? <laughs> and look, I know not everyone likes a crop top. Um, if you wanted this to be longer than a crop top, you can always add more material to it, okay? But the shape of the top part of this top, of the bodice, is kind of like crop. Otherwise, it's not cute, okay? If you make it too long, it'll be weird. So what, what I mean is we're going to add ruffles and you can add more ruffles if you want to make it longer. You get another shirt, you do, you know, uh, you can use a piece of fabric or something to make it longer, okay? But that's not going to be too short anyway. So it's already like on my waist and I'm going to add material. It's probably going to, I don't like crop top for myself. Um, uh, I sell them, you know, my customers, I have a lot of young customers and they like it, but myself, I don't like it. So I make at least on the height of my, uh, the waistband of my jeans or something. So it covers my body because, you know, I'm not working out. A, <laughs> I actually never liked crop top. It's not for me. All right. So this is here. Now we need to know, this is a very important step. We need to know this measurement here. How big is this? How wide is the hem of the crop top at this point, right? So you measure it and exactly 24, so it will be 48. So I'm going to take note of that. I'm going to write it down that I have 48 inches uh, that I need to make the ruffle for it, right? And that's how now we're going to calculate. So you just calculate, see how I did like it's flat 24 times two because front plus back 48 and then we put this shirt on the side and then we're going to work with the material we have right and surprise surprise this should be the same measurement right 48 right and it is <laughs> so here's the thing when you do ruffles gathering anything like that or a tiered, right? Think of like a tiered skirt that's uh, usually gathered, right? It, it is gathered. So here's how it goes. If I'm if I have a piece there, say like this is the shirt, and I want to add a gathering material and gathering tier, right? Another layer here uh, to to be cute. That's like a it's not a secret, but it's like definitely something that people don't think about it when they're making this. Is that the the ruffle or the next tier has to be wider than the top one, right? Because when you gather it, then it makes that volume, right? But the question is how much wider it should be. And I would say, I think I go by this rule to have at least twice as wide. So if I have that at 48, I want at least 96 inches wide, right? Because then I have enough material to gather and be cute. If you do like a, um, say like that's 48, if I did like 68 or 80, 80 would be okay, kind of. But if I did like 70, eh, it would be okay, but it would look a little cheap. It looks like, uh, it wasn't like rich. To look like expensive and nice and like voluminous, you want to have a lot of uh, material to gather. I usually work with even more than that, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Um, in this case, because this shirt is big enough for me, I can just fold it and I have two, I have doubled, right? So I have 148, 248, so I'll have the 96 that I need. That's what I'm going to do in this case. If you don't have it, say like, or if you want a wider, right? Because you could gather uh, a longer material, right? For me, it's going to be kind of short, look. But it's, it'll be enough to, to reach my... <laughs> my uh, waistband, my jeans waistband. So look, it's like four and a half, but it will have a little hem, you know, so I, I have two strips of four and a half uh, inches wide, right? And that's great. If you don't say you want to do at least like six inches or something, right? And then you don't have double, you can take six inches from here. So you have one width to work with. And then for your second width, you'd have this part, right? Look, six here, right? 
it won't go all the way there, but you'd have this part, and then you can take more from, from these leaves. Look, these leaves are there. You could add more here, and then some more here. And then you make another strip, and then you have at least two strips. Okay, so that's a solution for in case you want a longer, all right? So I could take six from here, six from here, and then six from my sleeves, and add all them together. And you can piece them all together just so ironing, you know, iron the seams nicely and no one sees the seams because it's all gathered. All right, so that's the, uh, the idea for this. So I'm gonna cut now. I wanna lay this flat, very like straight. So my strips are not twisted. But, and again, you don't need to be too paranoid, paranoid because when you're gathering stuff, First off, it's an upcycled piece, and every time you upcycle something, it's already altered, so you can keep altering until you find the result. If this doesn't work, you just try something else, you know, it's, it's totally okay. But what I mean is, you this in this case, is gathered, right? And the gathering just like hides all the mistakes. Not all of them, but most, right? So it works. Look, it's straight, and I'm just gonna... How much was mine? Like, let me measure exactly, so as a... Now I can do exactly half. So I have here 10 and a half. So I can have five uh, and a quarter. And then I just measure it and place, and place my mark right there, right? So look, 10 and a half inch, five and a quarter, and right there. 10 and a half five and a quarter. Get my ruler and make the nice line. Two lines, right? Now this one is a little funny, but it'll be fine. And cut it. Now I have these two strips. This one is, doesn't look very straight, but good. I have those two strips together and we're going to start sewing them, right? So first I'm going to add them together, then we're going to gather them and then attach to the shirt. So it's time to start sewing, right? And what we have to do is to attach these two pieces together to make a long strip, right? So we have these two, they're like circle now because they have the plaquage. I'm just gonna cut the plaquettes, get rid of the plaquettes, and then add them together. And I cut it right where the, the seam is. Sometimes I do work with the plaquettes, I, I add them to the piece, but in this design, it's not necessary. We just, now to make a long piece, I just add these two together, right sides together, make sure you see the, uh, you know, the seam that's like the right side, right? Uh, in my case, I don't have any print or anything. Maybe we're working with a shirt that has a print and you can see the right side better, but uh, mine is kind of like the same. So I'm just gonna attach them uh, by the, the edge here, and then I have a long strip. And so I trim this part, the extra seam allowance here, because we don't need this volume. And I'll finish with a zigzag, right? You might have a serger or something that, uh, or you can even do with the pinky shears, you know, that just to be finished. But you want to finish that one so it won't unravel. All right. I'm already fold here. Now what I like to do is to press the seam open, right? Because look how... It's like this, and it's a thing that I take very serious is to iron my seams because that's how it makes the piece look good, like professional, right? So I'm just gonna press, my iron is still warming up. I just wanna press the seam open, and then the next step is to hem this whole thing, right? Before we even gather anything, I wanna hem it. 
So I'm just going to do a narrow hem all the way here on one side because it's really like the hem of the shirt, right? So I'm going to fold twice like that and then do a top stitch, okay? You can, if you're a beginner, you can just zigzag the edge and fold or you can just leave it raw like with a zigzag if you want um, or you can do, use a serger and then fold once. I like to fold twice and I'm going to do very tiny so then it doesn't use much of my length here, right? Because this is part of the length of the shirt. Remember, I needed to cover my <laughs> my belly goes to at least reach the the waistband of my pants. So I want to use this. I don't want to, you know, take it over with the hem. So I'm going to do a very narrow, narrow hem. And now, so I'm going to uh, hem the edges here because this uh, goes like loose as well. So both of the edges, I'm going to do this whole. So I'm going to start from here and go all the way and then end on the other side here. So I'm going to fold it. approaching the end also fold I already like to do that you don't need to do like that you can you know pin it first but to save time I already fold it <laughs> we have the strip ready right we just need to iron it but then before we do uh, work with it, I want to hem my uh, sleeve because I always like to work with the piece before it has more stuff. The lighter and smaller the piece is to work with, better for me. So I'm going to hem this and it's the same process. I'm just going to fold twice, right? Fold once, fold twice and hem it. And if you are be a beginner, you can... Uh, iron it first or pin it first but basically you know just like a way to hem a cuff so fold it twice and so a top stitch on the inside and it should work Now finish both uh, the sleeve and our strip. So I'm going to press them, right? Because those, um, the edge here, both of the edges, look how it looks like unfinished. <laughs> so after pressing, then it'll look very nice. Also the sleeve, right? So, and then we can start working with the ruffles. Okay, the strip is done. Now the sleeve. Okay, so now we have both pieces ready and we can start working with the ruffles, right? And remember what we're going to do is we're going to um, add this part to this part. And because this is way wider, remember how it's twice as wide as the shirt, we're gonna gather this, right? And to gather, I use my yarn, right? That's the yarn we talked about at the beginning of this class. And I'll show you how I do that. You might know how to do this. If you don't, uh, you, you're gonna love it because ever since I learned this way of gathering, I've, I can't do another way. <laughs> it's very much faster and amazing. So you can do this. If you don't have the yarn, you just do old school. When you know the way i mean they're both old school but the way that i used to do and it's very common is just stitch with the long stitch length all around it and then you pull the thread so you do two stitches two seams all over the edge here 
not where the hem is, right? Where we just hem the other side, the raw side. So do two stitches very long and then pull the thread, the bottom thread. And you're good to, and then you can, you know, you're good to gather that that's the way it works. But me, the way I do is I zigzag over the edge. Okay, so let's do that. And you see how fast it goes. All right, so how we do that is we take the piece Put in the widest zigzag. You can also have like a longer stitch length. Doesn't need to be like the regular one. And then right on the edge of your um, piece, you place the yarn. And then you're gonna zigzag over the yarn, just like this. You know, you're skipping the yarn. Uh, the zigzag goes like over it. The, the yarn goes in the middle, right? Because later we're going to pull it. So you just have to stitch the whole thing all the way. And if, if by mistake you stitch the yarn itself with the needle, you know, if the needle goes through and stitch it, it you're not going to be able to pull it, but it's okay. You can go and cut that thread, that part of the thread and release it. Okay, so don't worry about it if you make a mistake and stitch by mistake the the um the yarn it's okay all right now i attach the whole thing look the, the yarn is here and i just need to pull it look it's easy and fast <laughs> And that's my favorite way to gathering. I do a lot of gathered clothes. And so this is definitely helpful. It definitely helped my process to go much faster. But you know, the thread also works if you're just stitched. Because it's silk and it's very light, uh, it got tight at some points, but I think it's fine. And then you're like, how much do I gather? Gathered until is uh, the width or the length of your hem here, right? The shirt hem. All we want to do is to make it this, this big. So look, it's almost there. And then when, and look, that's about it, right? It's right. So now the last step is just to attach the ruffle to the piece and it's already finished so it'll be super easy then i just do right sides together make sure the you know the hem is all correct and then sew open the shirt and then i'll attach look it will be like this right so then i'll just sew here don't remove the yarn yet uh i'll just attach the ruffle all the way i'll just do one stitch here and then have to do a finish later but basically it's just attaching these two pieces together now. Straight stitch, regular length stitch, and sew it. Do a good reverse right there. So you're sewing inside, right? After the, the yarn, you're skipping the yarn. and just attaching. And I always like, when I'm sewing gathered pieces like that, I like to have the gathered part on top, not on the bottom, because uh, it's easier for me to control. And also, you know, I keep like playing with the gathering, make sure it's all uh, even and stuff like that. So I like to see it. Now finishing up. And voila, we sold the whole thing. Look, woohoo. Now I can pull the yarn. Get rid of it. And now it's up to you how you're gonna finish it. Because look how it's like all, 
ugly, right? On the inside. So what I do is I trim this extra allowance here, right? So I just do like a good trim and then I go and do zigzag or serger. Because I don't have the thread for the serger, like four uh, threads, I'm just going to do a zigzag and that's it, right? And here's the shirt. Look how cute. No, it's a peplum top, right? So this, the last tip is this uh, collar. I like it because it's delicate, right? Uh, I like how it's little, like small like that, and it's, it goes with the shirt. But most of the times when I um, recycle shirts like this, if I do like something that's more like delicate, lighter, right? Because it was more like a casual shirt. Now it's like a blouse. I usually get rid of the the collar. That's just a tip for you. You might want to do that. If your collar is too heavy, too big, you can just open up this seam here from the collar. I keep the collar stained. So I open the seam here, remove this part, and then sew over it. And then it's like a nice, cute little collar. It looks like a, uh, I forgot the name, but it's not just the collar stained. It's lighter and it looks more like a blouse. And that was it. I hope you enjoyed making this blouse. Uh, you know, always keep in mind, feel free to do your own touches, change anything you want. Sometimes you, you could have even like keep the sleeve long if you want, or make out of two blouses, mix two colors, three colors, make it into a dress. You know, you can make it longer, add tears and make a dress from it. It's also a good idea. And don't be too precious. Don't be too hard on yourself. Just try it out do it. The important part here is that you make it, okay? It doesn't need to be perfect. It probably won't be perfect at the first time, but uh, just do it because you're going to be very happy that you did, all right? If you want to find more about myself, go to my Instagram. It's uh, at wardrobe school or send me a message at vanya at wardrobe school.com and check out my website. There's like more um, you know, little tutorials and stuff. And also I have a program that's called the Remakers, which every month we do a new upcycled project with like short videos, tutorials, and we have a support group for everyone that's part of Remakers. And it's been super fun. And I uh, would love you to join as well. If we're open for enrollment, you should join us. All right. Okay. So thank you so much for watching this class. And I hope to see a bunch of upcycled places you do. All right. Have fun with it. <laughs>